Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be starting to talk about sound change rules for Hangul. Now, what are sound change rules? They make Hangul not only possible to pronounce, but easier and faster for you to read. So here's a quick example. Ma shi. Ma shi. We learned that we can use the empty consonant to have other sounds just flow through them. So we get ma shi. However, how would you say just the sound without e? If you don't have any sound that it can flow through, how would you pronounce that syllable? Well, we're going to be using sound change rules to let us read any sound in Korean that we want easily and possibly. First of all, I need to say that this syllable by itself without any sound change rules cannot be pronounced. Some people might think it would be pronounced as mas, mas, right? Because you know that that letter is kind of an S. However, if you were to say mas, what you're actually doing is adding in a vowel, mas, e, mas, where it doesn't really exist. This word is actually pronounced as mat, mat. Now let's look at the next example here on the slide. This word also cannot be pronounced as is. If we were to say naje, naje, or something like that, this would also be adding in an extra sound, je, that doesn't exist in Korean. So we're going to need to learn sound change rules so that we can pronounce this. This one also would be pronounced as nad, nad. Notice that the letter at the bottom changes to become a digud as well. Now, before we get into what these sound change rules are and how they work, and there are several of them, I do want to give some disclaimers. Sound change rules might be complicated, but they are only to help make Korean simpler for you. They do not complicate the reading of Korean. They do the opposite. They make it easier and faster and more smooth so that you can say them more naturally. They are only there to help us. The other thing I wanted to say is that most sound change rules will occur naturally for you without ever having to even memorize them. So we are going to be covering a lot, but that doesn't mean you have to walk around with these memorized all the time. You're going to just through regular exposure, learn these rules naturally because they just sound better that way. And that's what I wanted to add. You don't need to stress about memorizing all of these rules. Again, most of them you'll learn naturally. Just be aware that they exist. Practice them as you need and refer to these rules whenever you get stuck and can't read a word. But don't let these sound change rules or memorizing them hold you back from learning the language. Even most native Korean speakers don't have any of these rules memorized and wouldn't be able to tell you what they are. They can simply use these rules naturally because they sound smoother, they sound more natural when they're said. And if you ever get stuck, you can always check in a dictionary, even an online dictionary like Naver, and they'll show you the pronunciation of every word. So with that, let's look at our very first sound change rule. And that's whenever you have a consonant at the bottom of a syllable that cannot be otherwise read. When a syllable ends with a consonant that cannot be just pronounced as is, specifically these six letters, these consonants will actually become pronounced as the consonant digud. This rule applies to the two examples I gave you at the beginning of this lesson, but let's look at a few more. Again, we have mat. Next, we have mid. Notice the bottom consonants, again, are those six. Anytime one of those bottom consonants is at the end of a syllable and you cannot pronounce it as is because it's not being followed by an empty consonant, it will change to become the consonant tigat. Next we have kat, mit, pat. It doesn't become pat, just pat. And finally we have not. This rule makes these syllables not just easier to pronounce, but also possible for you to pronounce without adding in extra vowels that don't exist. And any other consonant at the end of a syllable that can be pronounced normally without adding any vowels can be. So those are these ones. Kiok, nian, tigut, liel, miam, piup, iung. 
you can read those as normal at the end of a syllable without changing anything because they can just be pronounced as is without having to add in any extra vowel sounds. Again, you do not need to have these rules mastered in order to start learning Korean. Just pay attention and know that they exist and you can always refer back to them later as you need. So here's our next sound change rule. Anytime you have a syllable that ends with one of these consonants, sanggyeok, kyeok, piyeok, these consonants will become pronounced just as their regular versions. Again, at the end of a syllable. So here are three examples. Kyok. It doesn't become kyok. Well, that wouldn't even really be possible to say. The next one is buok. And finally, we have ip. And in fact, even if you didn't learn this sound change rule, just trying to say these words, you would probably naturally come upon this rule anyway. This next sound change rule is extremely common. Anytime you have two syllables and between the two syllables, you have one consonant following another consonant, this rule can come into play. When the first syllable ends with any consonant sound except for miam, nian, or lir, which will have their own rules, and the second syllable begins with any of these five consonants, kiyeok, digut, biyeok, siot, jiot, that second syllable's consonant will become pronounced as a double consonant. Okay, this is a very long rule, but it's actually very simple, and this rule would naturally happen when speaking Korean, whether you tried to do it or not. So, anytime it could become a double consonant, because those are the only five that can become double consonants, and it's following another syllable that ends in a consonant, it will become that double consonant. So, here are some examples. The first one, I'll say it slowly. Hak kyo. Hak if you try to say this at any normal speed, you will naturally, automatically apply, without thinking, this rule. Hakkyo. Hakkyo. Notice that it becomes hakkyo. Kyo. With a strong consonant, without even thinking of it. Just naturally because of what happens when you have one consonant before another, it naturally adds stress, making it into a double consonant. Hakkyo. Hakyo. Let's do some more examples. Pat ta. Pat ta. Pat ta. Pat ta. Next one. Ot ton. Ot ton. Ot ton. Notice it doesn't become o ton. It naturally becomes ot ton. Next we have pek po. Pek po. Pek po. Next, kuksu, kuksu, kuksu. Next we have, bok cha, bok cha, bok cha. And finally, op ta, op ta, op ta. Here's our next sound change rule, and this would also naturally happen if you were to try to speak Korean more quickly. Anytime you have a hiat, that's this letter here, that comes between two syllables with the empty consonant, the hiat sound will simply disappear. For an example, shiho, shiro, shiro, shiro. Notice that it just naturally disappears when said quickly because the H sound isn't really that strong to stay there. Next we have manha, mana, mana. And finally, choha, choha, choa, choa. So anytime the hiat comes between two syllables and there's an empty consonant, it simply disappears. And there's one more thing that this hiat does. Any time that a hiat comes either before or after a regular consonant, that regular consonant will become a strong consonant. This might sound like it would never happen naturally, but this also would naturally happen. Let me give you an example. Chak hada. Chak kada. Chak kada. Chak kada. 
Notice how that chuk, the last letter, the kyuk, becomes a strong version of itself because of that added H sound. Chakada, chakada. Next one, man ta, man ta, man ta. Next we have cho ta, cho ta, cho ta. Next, otoke, otoke, otoke. And next we have ilta, ilta, ilta. And finally, motada. This one, mot, by itself becomes pronounced as mot due to regular sound change rules where that letter cannot be pronounced, so it becomes a tika, as I've written on the slide. That sound then combines with the hiat, that H sound, and becomes tada, mot. Tada, mo tada. So this one's kind of a combination of two rules that we've learned so far, so just pay attention to that. Mo tada. Next, this sound change rule has to do with the letter lil, which is this one. Anytime you have a syllable that ends with lil, followed by another syllable that starts with any of these five consonants, that second syllable's consonant will also usually become a double consonant. This rule is similar to the other one we learned with hakyo and sounds becoming double consonants. Most of the time it will also happen with the letter lil as well. Here are some examples. Mir tang, mir tang, mir tang. Ir cha li, ir cha li, ir cha li. Mir ka ru mir karu mir karu mul ka mul ka mul ka hal ke hal ke hal ke mul kogi mul kogi mul kogi but not in every case here are a few common cases where it doesn't happen ol gul it doesn't become ol gul, just ol gul. Next we have well being, well being, well being. And finally, alba, alba, alba. But most of the time this does happen, so just keep that in mind. The next sound change rule has to do with this letter, which is piup. When you have two syllables together, any time the first syllable ends with this sound, now, that could be from piup, it could also be from the double version of piup, or the strong version, piup. If the second syllable then begins with the consonant, nian or miam, the piup will become pronounced as miam. So here are a few examples. Hap ni da, 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 hap ni da. This is another example of a rule that would happen completely naturally without even memorizing it. Habnida. Habnida takes a lot more effort because of that pause. Habnida, habnida, habnida. The next example is ip nemse, ip nemse, ip nemse, im nemse, im nemse, im nemse. Next we have pap mogo, pap mogo. Pamogo, pamogo, pamogo. Next, kop na, kop na, kom na, kom na. Next, we have chap nun, chap nun, chap nun. And finally, ip moyang, ip moyang, ip moyang. The next sound change rule has to do with pronouncing the kyok, which is this letter. Any time the first syllable within two syllables ends with this sound, the kyok, and the second syllable begins with those same two consonants, nian or miam, the kyok will become pronounced as iung, which is the empty consonant or the ng sound here. Again, this is another rule that would naturally happen even without having to think about it if you start pronouncing Korean quickly. So let's do a few examples. Han ku 
말, 한국말, 한국말. 백만, 백만, 백만. 국물, 국물, 국물. 목 마르다, 목 마르다, 목 마르다. 학년, 학년, 학년. 복는, 복는, 복는. 부엌 문, 부엌 문, 부엌 문. The next sound change rule has to do with the letter nian, which is this one. Anytime the first syllable ends with any of these following sounds. Now, these four sounds by themselves already will become a digut at the end of a syllable because they can't otherwise be read at the end of a syllable. And if the second syllable begins with the consonant nian, the first consonant will become pronounced as nian as well. This sounds a bit weird, but this also would naturally happen a lot of times. So here are some examples. Myot, nyan, myot, nyan, myon, nyan. Mat, na, mat, na, man, na. Mit, nun, min, nun, min, nun. Tat, nun, tat, nun, tan, nun. Eat, na. Eat na, in na. Eat mom, in mom, in mom. The next sound change rule we have also is using this letter lil. When the first syllable ends with the p up sound and the second syllable begins with this consonant lil, the p up will become pronounced as a miam and the lil will become pronounced as nian. Here are some examples of that. Hap liang, hap liang, ham liang. Ap liok, ab liok, am liok. Ship li, ship li, sim li. Hap liu, hap liu, ham liu. Hap li, ham li, ham li. And here's another sound change rule that also uses the letter lir. Anytime the first syllable ends with a kyok sound and the second syllable begins with the consonant lir, the kyok will become pronounced as an iung, just like it would with our example of hangungmar. And the lir will become pronounced as a nian. Here are some examples of that. Peg li, peng li, peng ni. Mak lyo, mang lyo, mang lyo. Bok li, bok li, bong ni. Bek lak, beng lak, meng lak. Shik liang, shik liang, shing yang. The next sound change rule also has to do with the letter li. Anytime the first syllable ends with the consonants iung or miam, those two, and the second syllable begins with the consonant lir, well, that lir will become pronounced as nian. Here are some examples. Kang lung, kang nung, kang nung. Tam la, tam la, tam na. Um lyo. Um nyo, um nyo. Tam lyok, tam lyok, tam lyok. Huang yul, huang yul, huang yul. But there is an exception to this, and that's the English word genre, which is chang ne in Korean and not chang ne. Okay, there's another sound change rule that has to do with this letter li. Any time it comes before or after the consonant nian, that consonant nian will also become pronounced like a lir. So here are some examples of that. Wol nam, wol lam, wol lam. Hun lan, hun lan, hun lan. Pal lo, pal lo, pal lo. 
辛辣，辛辣，辛辣。일년，일년，일년。만리，만리，만리。스물네명，스물네명，스물네명。Okay, we're almost done. This one has to do with sounds that have the tigut or the tiat, which are these two sounds here. Whenever the first syllable ends with the consonant tigut or tiat, they would have the same sound anyway. And the second syllable contains the vowel sound e. The tigut becomes pronounced as a chiat, and the tiat becomes pronounced as a chiat. So an example of that is. Ma i, ma ji, ma ji. Kat i, kat chi, kat chi. Kat hi da. Remember that when the hi it comes before or after a regular consonant, it makes that into a strong consonant. So here it makes that regular ti gut into a strong ti it. So you get kat chi da, kat chi da. Kuji, kuji, kuji. Put yo, put cho, put cho. And finally, our last sound change rule is well, we're not learning any more sound change rules for this course. These are all of the commonly used sound change rules that you will ever see. There are a few words, however, that are irregulars that don't follow these rules, or maybe they have their own specific sound change rules that are only in a few words. And just learn those words as you see them. You don't need to learn every single reason why every word is pronounced the way that it is. Here are a few examples that you might also see, though. Ship yuk is just pronounced as shim yuk. Get ip is actually pronounced as. Genip, hancha, hancha, hancha. Kamta, kamta, kamta. Yo kwan, yo kwan, yo kwan. Cho kan, cho kan, cho kan. So with that, you've now finished learning all of Hangul. When I see you guys again, we're going to be starting to learn the actual language, including grammar, vocabulary, phrases, and all that fun stuff. So again, great job, and I will see you guys again in the next lesson. Kram, tamitoba.